guys, so we recently just wrapped production on No Good Legend. It was this really cool Western directed by Lucas, DP'd by both Brittany and Brady Bissett, and then operated by myself and Kofi Yaboya. So this was actually our first experience using the Airy Alexa Mini LF, and it was your first experience as well. Was that right, Kofi? Yes, sir. It took a little bit of preparation. It was a new experience, but it was a lot of fun. Did you like do anything before we actually using the Alexa to kind of prep yourself to learn how to use it? Yeah, actually. So my thing is, is I have a maybe an irrational fear of uh, embarrassing myself. So whatever preparation I could do before something happens, I, tap, I typically would end up doing that. So um, when I was at home, I reached out to a local ZP that owned an RE themselves. And I got to got, get a feel for the camera itself, get a feel for how to rig it out and get a feel for like how to do multiple things on the camera from a menu setting perspective. And then also before I even did that, um, Ari actually has a simulator for their menus. Mm. So you can go on there, you can pick the cameras and you can control the menu settings on the website. So that way when you're on set, like you know where all the buttons are, you know what all like the terminology and all the stuff looks like internally. So that way when someone's like, hey, can you change your uh, shutter speed or can you go to the time code settings? Like I know where that is already. So I'm like, let me just figure that out. So at yeah. least when we get into actually camera prepping the night before, I kind of feel like I know what I'm doing and I'm not going in dark. 100%. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to link that down uh, in the description for you guys so you actually know where that is. But for me, how I, how I did it is I just showed up on set with absolutely no knowledge other than the fact that I have used the uh, Amira and also the uh, Classic, the Alexa Classic. Mm -hmm. So I, I have some you know, knowledge of the Alexa cameras prior to using the mini LF. Uh, but I just went up to our first AC, Adam. I mean, he's an incredible first AC, maybe the best first AC I've ever worked with directly. Um, I, I can and objectively I just, say that. Yeah, and I, I literally was like, okay, give me the, the two minute rundown of everything I need to know. And it was really a simple camera to use, honestly. Um, there's like a, a handful of like quick buttons on the side and then most everything is controlled on the EVF LCD screen. Uh, and again, that's really easy as well, because like if it says shutter at the bottom, you click the button right below shutter, like visually right below it. And then you're messing with that. And then for any of your other settings. So they made it really super simple. But what were your first impressions using the camera? Did you like it? Did you not like it? What are some of the positives and negatives when you were using the Alexa LF? I think what the things with uh, using more expensive cinema cameras, especially in like settings like these, is if you have like everything else that goes around on set and is enhanced by the Ari Alexa. So for example, uh, there are some shots where we were just shooting um, just out in the open with no lighting, no control or anything like that. And it would look just like any other camera, honestly. Um, but what ends up happening though, is that when we were shooting with like the, the mirrors for the external shots, or we were shooting with like negative fill, or uh, when we were setting up the saloon for different situations, that's where you started to notice the difference in the quality between the two cameras. It happens a lot more when you control the other variables in filmmaking and not just say, I have an Ari Alexa and some Atlas Mercuries, let's go and shoot something. There's, uh, there's a lot to be said about once you kind of dial everything else in, having an Ari makes it that much more. It's almost the last thing on the list when you're talking about production. Um, when you're using a setup like that in an environment where you have really talented DPs and directors and gaffers, that's where the camera starts to shine. And that's like going in there, I kind of assumed that was the case. But when you're using mm -hmm. it, that you really notice a difference. Yeah, 100 percent. So you're you're are you referencing the image itself? Um, yes. When you're actually all set and done. Yeah, um, absolutely. There's a certain I mean, there's a reason why all these movies are shot with Alexa. They didn't just pick it on a whim. It's because that sensor is so dang pretty. There is this mojo or this extra sauce. I don't know how they're doing it. It has to do with color and how the, the sensor is actually reading the light. Uh, and I'm not smart enough to understand that. But basically what I am smart enough to understand is that there's a reason why everyone picks it is because it looks so gosh darn beautiful. Now, we did actually shoot with the GH7 as well, the Lumix GH7. And Kofi actually has a, a video where I, I kind of tag in and say, hey, what's up? Uh, so I'll have that video linked down below so that you guys can check out our thoughts on using the GH7. Um, now, what was your impressions? Because you actually shoot a lot more uh, productions with uh, production style cameras like the Komodo, right? Is that the red camera you've been using? Yeah, so I've, I've like, when everyone asks me, like, what camera is my main camera, my answer is just yes, because I've used <laughs> everything. And, like, I like, there's a cycle of cameras. My house is just a conveyor belt of different cameras. Um, and I'm starting to learn that, like, when you could rent things, you just rent things. But um, I shot on the Red Komodo X a bunch. I have, uh, I'm going to give the Pixis a whirl for a little bit. But the mm -hmm. Komodo X and the Venice one 
um, I would say are the ones that I've been using a little bit more often. And the Venice is actually somewhat comparable in size to the Lumix, right? Or in, uh, to mm. the Aria Alexa, or is it larger? The Venice is larger. The Venice is, the Venice is larger. Okay. The Venice one is because it has a big, like, um, it has like a raw recorder on the back and it's huge. So right. it, like, imagine the Burano, but like, if you took like half a Burano and then added it to the back of the Burano, but then you put a V-mount <laughs> battery in the back. So oh, like, okay, it's a, cool. it's a, it's, it's a, a thick, it's camp. absurd. You can't, you, I tried to go no easy rig with it. Terrible decision. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. Okay. It's because the point that I was about to bring up is for me, most everything I've been working in the YouTube space, the social media space. So every camera I use, uh, most times is like a small mirrorless camera of some sort, like FX3, EOS R back with the a seven three, you know, something along those lines. So for me, this camera felt ridiculous and heavy and cumbersome but also lended itself to making the footage a little bit smoother handheld, obviously with the easy rig. But I was going to ask you, did the, the size of the camera impact you, which it sounds like it wouldn't because you've been using the Venice. Um, I think it's just the idea of like, you just have to be aware of your support. Like you don't necessarily want to willy nilly go and handhold that and like not use the right support in order to use the camera. You don't want to not rig it without a top handle, because if you do have to kind of get a low angle, um making sure you have your side handles kind of configured the way that you want it to so there is a little bit more care in terms of how you operate but in terms of knowing that but like in so knowing that it doesn't bug me too much which right. is nice um one second though my laptop's about to die because i unplugged it to plug my light in and i gotta yeah. just put another okay i'm just gonna replug this somewhere else yep just because i could see it die this is making the video so i hope you know that yeah Guys, we make mistakes too, especially Kofi. Oh, I make so many mistakes and people think I'm perfect. And it's, I hope people don't think I'm perfect, actually. Um, Kofi, I shoot. think you're perfect. And I think you talk better than me. Give me like one uh, second before this laptop dies. I'll be here. It's better not make the video. <laughs> one eternity later. I found it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We just barely made it. I have 2% made left. It? Oh, that would have ended awfully. Um, all right. Yeah. I, I think the point that you were making is, is that when you're properly supported, the, the camera size doesn't really matter. And that's actually a note that I have right here is that this camera took a village. It took a village yeah. to get it to work properly. We had a first and second AC and they literally kept the machine moving. It was incredible. In fact, oftentimes it had very intimate moments with Adam cause I'd be hooked up with the whole easy rig and he would just walk over and like lift the camera so that it would take the weight off of my knees <laughs> and we'd just be staring into each other's eyes. It was beautiful, beautiful moment and stuff like that. But then also what was really cool is like, oftentimes if, if need be, I had a, a Hollyland monitor set up on the top, uh, which worked out great for me to monitor when I was on the easy rig, but then the EVF screen could be flipped around. So either Brady, uh, RTP could look at it or also, um, Adam, the first AC could be making changes as he needed and it wouldn't mess with me looking in making sure my stuff was good too. So it was pretty cool how many people it took to get it going. But again, it, it makes sense at the end because you're trying to get the best image possible. Yeah, no, that makes it like the, the amount of care that these cameras need, especially on set, A, is just super nice. Like it's really nice when I'm like, hey, we have to move the camera this way. And Adam literally like glares at me. And he's like, do not touch that tripod. I will carry yeah. it. And I'm like, like awesome, but... I could just I could just move it like I've lifted things before I think right and he's like no 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 I am doing this you save your back and I'm like oh this is kind of nice but having that support is an incredibly important I mean the a lot of those bigger style cinema cameras you do need have first AC second ACs and stuff like that and that's also just, it's a risk management thing right like if you had to run that all on your own you could in theory but the amount of injuries that you would have by doing so would be significant right you don't know if you might try to get the camera off a tripod, but because you're doing it by yourself, it falls down a set of stairs or like you try mm -hmm. to handheld a camera without an easy rig because you can't put it on on yourself and then you end up slipping a disc. Like a lot of those things are risk management and also like technical support. There might be things that an operator or a DP doesn't know about the camera that your first AC does and that makes things run a bit smoother and also it's less stress on your operator and DP to have that. 
Yeah, 100%. I mean, and honestly, maybe this video could be retitled to why you need a first AC because yeah. I d had never used that camera before. And there were so many times that things would come up and he would just walk over and click, 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 click and it'd be fixed, right? Or, oh, we need to do a lens change and I'm already rigged up and they could walk over and switch the lens without any issue or whatever, right? There's so many little things that come up. And again, when you're using a camera that requires that many things to get it to be functional, assistance is it, it really is almost an it's a it's a necessity um it first ac uh, is super duper important another thing i wanted to talk to you about in terms of the uh, alexa is heat management when you were using it did i mean it was 103 degrees fahrenheit it, you want to translate that to celsius too hot <laughs> too hot it was very very hot um when we were operating and i did notice that we did have a few mirrorless bts cameras go down because of the heat but the alexa seemed to maintain uh, just fine well i feel like the that thing's built like a tank like i feel like the other reason why alexa cameras or just re cameras in general get used on set is because they're like they're meant to withstand all of the elements right um being especially a camera that big it has a gigantic fan right and that's something that's going to help dissipate heat a lot more. Some of these smaller mirrorless cameras, unfortunately, don't have things like fans built into them, or they mm -hmm. might not have fans that are big enough that even when they do have some sort of ventilation, if it gets hot outside like that, it might not still it still might not hold up, right? So those are some things you need to consider. But yeah, no, I think the the RE camera is worth its weight and its price point based on not only its image quality, but the fact that you could throw it around anywhere and it'd still be okay. Yeah, 100%. And, and what's cool about how the Alexa Mini LF ha handled heat is that it, it does have these fans in it, and they are wicked loud. I mean, when it turns up, it's like a turbine, right? Uh, especially we, I especially noticed it when we were shooting in the saloon. In fact, I think Armando tapped on my shoulders a few times and was like, it's freaking loud. Uh, but once you actually hit record, obviously they understand that you're recording audio and you can't have the fans uh, go in turbo blaze. And so they completely shut down or at least go really quiet so that you can't hear it during the actual takes. And then again, it's really hot. So it'll just turn them right back up between takes. So it, it knows what it needs to do and when it needs to do it, which is great. I just kind of want to hit the final thoughts with you. I mean, this is a $100,000 camera that we were using without all the extra things like lenses and extra and extra. Do you think that, um, do you think that there's a reason in today's world to be using these cameras uh, extensively? Or do you find that it just needs to be saved for like the most important shoots that we do in like Hollywood or whatever? I think it depends. Like, I think the every single camera has become a tool now, right? And there's so many cameras out now that have so many specific little quirks to them, where knowing that knowing what a camera what the camera is, and knowing what it does will answer that question for you. It's kind of hard to say, like, you, across the board, every Hollywood production should get shot in an RE or a Venice 2. That'd be a hard thing to do, because I don't know the parameters of the shoot, right? But I think what's happening now is that we're coming into this space where everything has a particular need and every user has a particular preference. Some people that might operate on an Ari Alexa might prefer the Venice 2 for whatever the reason might be, prefer a uh, Canon C500, who knows, right? Sure. I think what we're into now is because there's so much saturation of these things is your context and use case is far more important than associating a brand name to a production size, if that makes any sense. Because if we could run no good legend on gh sevens we would but there are things about the gh7 that it might not work the best as an a camera with the stuff that we had particularly with a smaller sensor you have to do a lot more making sure you're dialed in with your lighting or some of those imperfections get highlighted right so there are some mm -hmm. things where it might not make the most amount of sense and there are a lot of things where it does yeah 100 percent. and um Guys, this this isn't the only camera that we were using on No Good Legend. As you just alluded to, we used the Lumix GH7, which also shoots in Log C3. This is a pretty crazy thing that is happening right now. Um, and so we will have more videos on my channel, Kofi's channel, everyone's channels, and there'll be proper uh, behind-the-scenes videos about the No Good Legend production. So definitely make sure you're keeping an eye out on YouTube. This is pretty cool, pretty exciting times. It was a fun production to work on. And yeah, this was just our first experience using the Alexa Mini LF. We're not exactly professionals when it comes to it, but hopefully our thoughts and opinions were useful to you guys. So I hope that you all enjoyed this. And Kofi, thanks for coming on. Hey, not a problem, man.